Ellen White urges members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to unite with evangelicals and Catholics who are pushing for Sunday Law. Fact or fiction? Fact. You can go right now to the official archives for the Seventh-day Adventist Church and read right here from the official journal Advent Review and Sabbath Herald dated February 14, 1888. Now, for those of you who are familiar with church history, you will know that the year 1888 has special importance because of Senator Henry Blair's famous proposed National Sunday Law. You will also know that one of the prominent organizations supporting Sunday Law was the WCTU, or Women's Christian Temperance Union, which originally began with the purpose of advocating to make alcohol illegal, but then later took on other goals, such as promoting Sunday legislation. In a history book titled The World of Ellen G. White, which you can read for free online, the author affirms that of the two important national groups working for Sunday legislation, one was the WCTU. The students of Adventist history will also know that early Adventists, including Ellen White, not only openly supported the temperance movement, but often joined with the WCTU to work together to make alcohol illegal. In other words, we supported the government's right and duty to enforce legislation to protect civil society. And we also supported the work of other organizations who pressed the government to do this. But, and this is the critical distinction, we did not support everything that those organizations were doing. Adventists supported the WCTU when it came to temperance but not when it came to Sunday Law. And this is where this article is fascinating. At the annual meeting of the American Health and Temperance Association held in Oakland in 1887, where Ellen White said, this is the very work that must go with the three angels' messages. So take a moment to appreciate that. People today say you can't legislate morality, but here they were not only advocating government to legislate morality, but said it is the very work that goes with the three angels' messages. Furthermore, whenever you can get an opportunity to do what? To unite with the temperance people, do so. And check this out right here. How? How are we going to undeceive them unless by associating with them? You say they are going to carry the question right along with the Sunday movement. How? How are you going to do what? to help them on that point. How are you going to let your light shine to the world without what? Without uniting with them in this temperance question. Today, it has become, unfortunately, very common to hear within the Adventist Church, especially within North America, that if evangelicals and Catholics are doing a public good or even pushing the government to do its duty, like, say, protect unborn children, then therefore, we should not unite with them because it might somehow lead to the dreaded Sunday law. But not only did Ellen White and our pioneers not teach anything even remotely like this, but they strongly urged the exact opposite. People today say, don't unite with them, but she literally says, unite with them. Rather than scare Adventists away with some scary boogeyman fear porn, she told them, get close to them. Quote, you can do it. You can do it. You have ideas they have never thought of, and this places you where? It places you on vantage ground. The WCTU and Sunday proponents were people of other denominations, many of whom had bad and incorrect ideas about Adventists, and the only way to address this problem was not to run away, but to go and get close to them. Ellen White said, people believe everything they ought not to of us. How? How are we going to undeceive them unless by associating with them? Ellen White openly urged Adventists to go unite with evangelicals and Catholics and others who were pushing for Sunday Law. I suspect that maybe there will be some people who might not want to hear this because such an idea is not very popular today, but these are documented historical irrefutable facts. The important lesson is that yes, it's perfectly okay and even a moral obligation to unite with people of other denominations in a good work, so long as you are not uniting with them in any effort to do something that is not good. For example, if your local community gets together to pick up trash and clean up graffiti, and if there are Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists in your community who do this, 
It does not make you a Muslim, Hindu, or Buddhist for picking up trash or cleaning up graffiti. To teach or even suggest otherwise is not only absurd, but it demonstrates that you don't care about your community. Another example is abortion. The government has both the God-given authority and the duty to protect the right to life because without the right to life, you can have no other rights, including religious liberty. Religious freedom is dependent upon the right to life. So when Catholics and evangelicals petition the government to protect children from violence, this is not only something with which Adventists can unite, but with which we should unite precisely because we aim to be champions of religious liberty. Hosea 12.3, the Bible defines the unborn as our brothers with the exact same word for born brothers, and we are our brother's keeper. Again, uniting with someone in a good work does not mean that you accept everything else that that they teach. And to prove this point, when the American Medical Association began their famous physician's crusade to make abortion illegal, these very same Adventists openly supported this work. This effort by the American Medical Association was led by Dr. Horatio Storer. Remember that name. And Adventists respond by stating in their journal, the medical profession have taken a what? A noble stand. As guardians of human life, they are what? They are compelled to do so, and society owes a debt of gratitude to who? To Dr. Horatio Storer. Everyone should go read about the amazing story of Sarepta Henry. She was the national evangelist for the WCTU, but eventually became very sick and ill. She was then taken to the, fortunately, to the Battle Creek Sanitarium, where she was miraculously healed by prayer. She then became an Adventist, and after her conversion, she would go and petition the WCTU to stop their push for Sunday legislation. When her petition failed, Sarepta was going to give her resignation and quit, but notice this. Of all people, it was Ellen White who wrote to her and told her, no, don't do that. The Lord does not bid you separate from the Women's Christian Temperance Union. Now this is, of course, a fascinating story, but what is so sad is that if Sarepta were alive today, she would have been completely discouraged and paralyzed with fear that this was all some terrible, deceptive, sinister work of the dragon and beast power. Over the last 50 years, Adventists have had tremendous opportunity to contribute to the important movement to protect the unborn and the right to life, and to take a public faithful stand for the Sixth Commandment. But instead of protect children, we have sided with the devil, defended this evil, and condemned. We have condemned the very people who are in fact doing a noble and godly work. Speaking about the sale of alcohol, Ellen White asked, how can Christian men and women tolerate this evil? Yet today, the very leaders of her own church stand in the pulpit on Sabbath and defend the violent genocide of multiplied millions of little boys and girls, and they will slander anyone who opposes it, as has been documented in many of my videos. Ellen White very correctly urged Adventists to unite with Catholics and Evangelicals. You can do it, she said. You have the ideas that they have never thought of. And this places you on where? On vantage ground. In closing, if you have not read the book Whirlwind of the Lord, The Amazing Story of Sarepta Henry, I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching.